I'm generic news anchor number 53, and thank you for tuning in to news here at SOIC in the green screen room. You probably have a series of questions you're asking yourself, such as, what are all these microphones around me? How do I set them up and use them? Am I wearing pants underneath this desk? All this and more will be revealed soon. Here at SOIC Checkout, we have a range of microphones available for our students to acquire, ranging from shotguns to lavaliers to condensers and dynamic microphones. Before we dive in, we'll give you a quick sound test of some of the microphones we have available. <coughs> How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? First microphone we are going to discuss is the lavalier microphone, also known as a lapel microphone, as you can see. This microphone is meant for run and gun filmmaking, documentary work, as well as newscasting, like myself. Up next, we have the Shure SM58, well known for its use in stage productions as well as reporting applications. We also have... I'm getting word from our pit reporter. We've got something big and exclusive for the SOIC channel. Go to you, Sean. Man, it's kind of windy out here. Oh. Thanks, Joel. I'm here at IUPUI, the School of Informatics and Computing, where we've heard rumors that they've obtained one of the new Blackmagic Pocket 6K cameras, and we're here to talk to them about it. Up next, we have a selection of cardioid condenser microphones, such as the Shure SM27 and the Sennheiser MD421. These types of microphones have made their place in recording studios across the world, known best for recording vocals and instruments, such as on live radio. So, in conclusion for today's radio program, um, we, we hope nothing but the best for the people of uh, Kofukulstan and their, their glorious success in their football career. Um, that is all here on Not Public Radio. Thank you. Last but not least, we have the shotgun microphone, very commonly used on both interview and film sets for recording audio. It can be set up on a boom Of course, you can also set it in a boom cradle on a C stand for stationary interviews. But that's all from me. Thank you for tuning in to this new segment. We'll now go to our secondary segment where we'll teach you how to use the various recorders and interfaces we have at checkout to record the audio you'll be using these microphones for. Stay classy, SOIC. Alright. I need more bear claws and donuts in the break room or something. This is the Zoom H4N Pro field recorder. This is one of the most common field recorders used and it's the majority of what we have in equipment checkout. First, I'm gonna give you a run through the outside of the recorder. On the right side, we have your SD card slot, your recording level options. This is for your recording input levels, not for your output, this is just for your input recording levels. Your menu button and your scroll wheel for navigating within the menu. On the left side, we have the volume. This is your output volume for your headphones, your headphone jack, a USB output, and your power button. To power it on, push and hold down on this switch. On the top, we have built-in stereo microphones, and on the bottom, we have your XLR inputs. This recorder can be used with both the built-in microphones or external XLR microphones. It's important to make sure that you have your input set correctly. You'll notice these three buttons here on the left with lights next to them indicate which one is selected. If you want to use the built-in microphones, you'll select the top mic button. If you want to use any XLR microphone that goes into either of these ports on the bottom, you're going to make sure that you select one or two, depending on which input you're using. Before you begin recording, you're going to select the menu button and format your card. You'll use the scroll wheel on the side to scroll down and you're going to find SD card. Once you find SD card, you're going to push on the scroll wheel to select it, go down and select format. Then you'll hit back by using the menu button again. This will take you back to the main menu. Next, we're going to go up to your input options. This is where you're going to be setting the majority of your input options and it's important that you do this before you use it every time so that way you don't have to fix in post. 
select your input menu, and you're going to scroll down until you see auto level. Auto level can be used in a pinch, but it's usually best if you turn it off and set it manually using the record level buttons on the right side. You'll do these manually so that way you don't get too much room tone or distort your audio when it clips. Next, you're going to go to the next option down here, Mono Mix. This is one of the most important menu settings that you can do. You're going to select Mono Mix and make sure that that is turned on. If you do not have this on, then just whichever side you plug your XLR cable into will be the side that audio is recorded to in a stereo mix. So if you just plug your microphone into the left side, you're only going to have sound through the left speaker. Same thing with the right side. If you plug it into the right side, you're only going to get sound through the right speaker. And then you have to go split that up in post, and that's usually not fun. So make sure that your mono mix is turned on, so that way when you plug one microphone into the cables, it goes to both inputs and you have a good stereo mix. The next menu option will be phantom power. If you're using any type of condenser microphone, phantom power will have to be on. And for the large majority of what we have in equipment checkout, you're going to want 48 volts to be your option. The only time you will not need phantom power is if you're using the Shure SM58. The majority of the other microphones we have in checkout, including the shotgun microphone, are going to need phantom power to get the full range of the microphone. Select menu button to go back to the main menu. Select it again to go back to your home screen. And now you're ready to record. To arm recording, you're going to press the record button once. When the record light is flashing, that means that it is armed. You'll see your levels pop up and you'll be able to check your levels before you start recording. Please note that this is not recording. There's a pause button here and this light is flashing. This is armed only. Again, if you see the light flashing, your microphone is armed, but it is not recording. You have to press the button again. You'll see the timer start going and you'll see the record button appear and this light will be solid. Now you are recording. Again, if you see the light flashing, you are not recording. I cannot tell you how many times myself and my friends have gone an entire shoot or part of a shoot thinking we recorded audio and it was just armed the entire time. And that is absolutely no fun. So make sure that you press the button once to arm it and press it again and make sure that this light is solid and you see the timer running before you start recording. That's the Zoom H4n Pro recorder. Now I'm going to hand it over to Joel to teach you about the Tascam recorder. All right, thank you, Sean. So what we're going to be talking about here is the Tascam DR40X linear PCM recorder. Very much Tascam's take on the Zoom H4n. It's got many of the same features as the Zoom recorder. One of the major differences that I'm going to show you right off the bat is as opposed to the H4n where you need to go into an internal menu to set phantom power or to switch inputs. Over here, you have one switch that focuses all of its attention on your external inputs. So you can switch between a line level signal, a microphone level signal, or a microphone level signal with phantom power. Main thing to keep in mind, when you switch to phantom power, let me flip back, you will see a message pop up that says, are you sure you want to turn phantom power on? Make sure that whatever microphone you have plugged into your external inputs on the bottom needs phantom power. If you have a ribbon mic going in here, don't do it. Or even if you just have a dynamic mic, like a handheld, you don't need phantom power for that. So in that case, I'm going to switch back just so we don't have to worry about it. Main thing that's going to be different between the H4n and the DR40X are just the location of all the menus. On your top left-hand dial switch down here, you have a basic menu button that's going to take you through all the different settings and menus so you can change your bit rate, your sample rate, if you want a low cut. Nothing really different from the H4n. It's mainly just learning a new menu. All the functionality is more or less the same. If you want to choose your input, big thing to keep in mind, you want to hit the record mode button and that will change. By default, it'll be your stereo mics up at the top. You'll be set on record mode. You'll go to the right. You will switch to a mono signal where you can switch between either your internal mono, which is just going to duplicate the channels on your top two mics up here, or you can switch to a mono signal with one of your external inputs. In this case, it defaults to the left input. All right, I'm gonna start by going through my menu, go all the way up to the top. That's where I'll go to my recording setting. 
This is where I can set an auto record feature where it will automatically set a level so you don't have to set a level yourself. In most cases, I would recommend that you don't use auto record or auto level or any of those features. It's better to just set the level yourself so you can control the balance between room tone and not distorting your mic. You can set a low cut in case you have any extra wind noise and you don't have a dead cat on your microphone. Great spot for that. This is where you can change the format you're recording in and your sample rate. In most cases, your standard for video is going to be 48 kilohertz for your sample rate. For your format, I would set it as a WAV file at either 16-bit or 24-bit. It's entirely up to how much fidelity you want in your audio. 16-bit will be just fine for video, though. In your play setting menu, you can decide how much audio is going to be played on playback for seeing how it came out. What's interesting about the Tascam DR40X is that it can not only record directly onto the SD card included, but it can also record as an audio interface. Now, its sample rate only goes up to 48 kilohertz, which if you're recording to a computer for video, that's fine. If you're trying to use this to record music, you might go with something with a bit more fidelity. But it is nice that it has that feature in case you're in a pinch. You can set the date and time on the Tascam so you can keep better track of what date and time your audio files were recorded on. You can use the auto power save to have it shut off anywhere from 3 to 30 minutes. You can set the contrast for the backlight, change the battery type. In the system menu, you'll be able to set how much phantom power your phantom power switch on the left gives you. In this case, I would always set it to 48 volts of phantom power. Some devices will use 24, but it's not very common for video. Then at the very bottom, this is where you're going to find your format buttons. So you can either do a quick format, which keeps your file structures the same, but just gets rid of the audio you have, or you can do an erase format, which gets rid of everything and does a complete reset of your SD card. So I'm going to start recording something now. I don't have anything plugged into my external input, so I'm going to go to the record mode, and I'm going to switch back to my stereo internal microphones, which are these two up top. When you're going to record, first thing you want to do is choose which input you're going to record with. In this case, I'm going to use the onboard stereo mics, so just make sure your record mode is set to stereo and your source is set to the internal stereo microphones that are on the Tascam itself. I'm going to go back to my menu real quick. Now I'm at the main menu. I'm going to hit record. One thing to keep in mind, you will see that audio levels are going. You see meters moving. You see the record button has a red light blinking. You are not recording. I repeat, you are not recording. I cannot tell you how many times I have left this button on and not hit it a second time and not recorded a single thing. It happens to the best of us. So when you have your meters going and your red light is flashing, hit the button a second time, verify that it is switched to say record in the top left-hand corner and make sure that your timer is starting to go up. Now you know you are recording audio. Once we're done recording our audio, I'm just going to hit the stop button, which also doubles as our home or power button. Now we can go into our menu, we can go to browse, and we can listen to the audio that we just did. All right, that about does it for the Tascam DR40X. Pretty similar to the Zoom H4n, just a few quirks you have to keep in mind. If you have anything else you need to check on with your equipment, go ahead and check out some of the other videos here on the Checkout YouTube channel. Other than that, happy filming.